Welcome everyone, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to be able to tell you today that a phased re-entry of people back into our community is now underway. Yes. Throughout this whole ordeal, since our residents left our homes and belongings behind, one question has been at the top of their minds, when can we go home? A dedicated team of more than 1,400 dedicated professionals has worked tirelessly in our community since, we, since the evacuation to answer that question. And thanks to their dedication, we are able to start bringing people home to Slave Lake. I want to stress that this, this is not a general call for everyone to come back. We have a planned approach for re-entry. The first phase of re-entry has been ensuring that critical infrastructure is in place. That has now happened. Our drinking water has been declared safe, though a boil water advisory is in effect. There is no threat of wildfires restarting in the vicinity of our communities. Essential services are back in operation, including power, water, natural gas, as well as hospital and 911 services. And we have some reentry supports in place, including some temporary housing and a community social center that will provide returning residents with a variety of social services and information. Our priority has been to ensure that our community is safe and livable. And with these services in place, we're on our way. The second phase of the reentry plan will begin today, and that's right, today. This will involve the return of essential workers, including healthcare providers, utility personnel, protective and emergency personnel, and local government service providers. All essential workers have been contacted directly and will return to town to get things up and running in preparation for others to return. The next stage of the reentry plan is the return of owners and workers of key regional businesses. The final phase of reentry plan will include all other residents with a planned reentry. I can't tell you the exact date for the third and fourth phase of this plan, but I can say we're talking about days. We want to ensure a safe and orderly return. And I'm very grateful for the collaboration uh, working with the MD of Lesser Slave River. I've been working closely with the Reeve Denny Garrett uh, this past week, and together our councils have pulled together to work as a team, and I'm uh, very proud of that. As well, I know we wouldn't be here today uh, with this news if it wasn't for the tremendous support of our provincial government and Alberta Emergency Management Agency. We know our Premier cares about us, Minister Goudreau and the other ministers, Deputy Ministers, RMLA, and the provincial staff that have been, uh, that have offered to help us has been outstanding. And uh, it, it's just truly heartwarming to know we're not alone. The Alberta, <laughs> the Alberta Emergency Management Agency, amazing, talented people that have come here to help us on the ground. I feel honored to work with them as part of our team. And uh, I'm just proud to be an Albertan with that type of resource and that type of compassion for our residents. And of course, behind me, you can see our many heroes are here with us today, our firefighters, our emergency personnel, uh, our utilities people uh, that never really left our community. Um, I have to thank them, uh, their heroic, their courage and bravery. Uh, we had no loss of life, and we have many, many buildings standing because of them, and I, I just want to thank them here today as well. <laughs> I'd also like to take, thank the many communities throughout Alberta who have been hosting and assisting our displaced residents. Uh, it's tremendous support we've received, and uh, I appreciate their generosity. And uh, I know there's countless, countless others that work so hard to make our community ready for us to come home. 
The plan I've just outlined reflects what incredibly complex undertaking we are dealing with. And it's just one step of what is still a long journey ahead, including the return of those who have lost their homes. But it is certainly good news for our community. We want to get our residents home as safely and quickly as possible. And with the continued cooperation of residents and our partners, we'll get the job done. Those of you who aren't from Slave Lake might not know this, but this gazebo was built to symbolize the rebirth of our town after a catastrophic flood in the 80s. We came back from that, and we'll come back from this. Thank you. I'll just turn the mic over to our Reeve, Denny Garrett. Thank you very much, Karina. Um, don't you just hate it when somebody steals your speech? Um, I just, I just want to re reinforce the fact that we are so grateful for all the help that we have received in trying to restore our community. Uh, it's been arduous. It's been tough. It's been exciting. It's been sad. It's been glad. It's, you go through every range of emotion to get to where we are today, but the ball is in motion. And my God, hopefully, without anyone kicking it sideways, everything will go as planned, and we'll have our people back into our community by the weekend. I'm not supposed to say that, I'm sorry, but <laughs> my God, I hope it happens. And And I would also like to add my thanks to the people behind us. Our firefighting crew, 28, 30 strong, 40 strong, they saved 70% of this town. They saved 70% of this town. They saved numerous homes in the MD, Canyon Creek, Wagner, Widewater, right through Park Poplar Lane. Without their help, without the help of the firefighters that came to give us a hand, who knows what we have lost. We are just so thankful that today we're here saying, come on home. It's time. Thank you. I'll turn the mic over to uh, Chief Twin. Good afternoon. Uh I'd like to lead off by saying that the uh, Sarge First Nation was quite fortunate. We didn't lose any structures on the reserve. Uh, we're very thankful to the Creator and all those looking out there after us. But I'd like to extend a special thank you to the uh, Lesser Slave Lake uh, Regional Fire Department, all the uh, wild firefighters, and all the volunteers. Without them, we wouldn't be here today looking at a re-entry. And just from our community to the bigger community, Thank you very much, and hopefully we can uh, offer some support in the coming days, and uh, we'll, we'll be here. Thank you. I'd like to turn the mic over to uh, Minister Goudreau, the uh, Minister of Municipal Affairs. Well, thank you very much, uh, Chief. Uh, Mayor uh, Billy Kinney, uh, Reeve Garrett, uh, Emily uh, Pearl Callahassan. Today we have heard about the steps being taken to complete the recovery of Slave Lake and the surrounding communities. This is not an easy or quick task. It's a marathon involving literally hundreds of people working very, very long hours. As the mayor indicated, the people standing behind me are just a small portion, but an extremely important portion of all of those who uh, have helped uh, to move this community forward. I continue to be amazed at the work that is in progress under the leadership of the town of Slave Lake, the MD of Lesser Slave River, and the Saw Ridge uh, First Nation in partnership with our government. And this is all to make this community safe and livable for the people of Slave Lake and surrounding communities. I know that people want their lives back, and it can be hard to see how each piece of the puzzle comes together, but I can tell you that each completed task leads directly to the next. This is about ensuring that services are here for the community as a whole, 
that there is a community to come back to. For every person and family affected, getting home is the first step back to the life that they had. The challenge is to meet that more than 7,000 times. I want to assure you that the Alberta government will be there with your officials after the return happens. We will continue to work with the local municipalities to ensure that people continue to have access to utilities personnel, emergency personnel, home inspectors, social services workers, and other supports that may be needed. People are still strongly encouraged to register with the Red Cross and make sure they have up-to-date information in order to contact all evacuees. The Red Cross database will be used to provide direct information to people, including fact sheets and timelines. Updates will also be posted on the wildfiresupport.alberta.ca website and supplied to evacuation reception centers. A community does not come through a common experience like this without change. Our challenge is to make that change as smooth and as positive as it can possibly be under the circumstances. Slave Lake and the surrounding communities already have the strongest foundation for the future, their ability to stand together. And this gazebo is a testament to some of the past challenges this community has had. As people return home and welcome their friends, neighbors, colleagues, and coworkers, they can strengthen that foundation so that the community that emerges from this disaster even, is even stronger than before. Now, I'll ask uh, the local MLA, uh, uh, Pearl Callahassan, to uh, say a few words. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hector. <laughs> Minister Goudreau, Chief Twin, Marie, Mayor Karina, Reeve Denny, all the councillors that are here and that have, who have been here throughout this whole uh, arduous task. It's so good to be here today to hear the, the idea of coming back to our community because every call that I've been getting, and there have been many, the people want to know when they're coming back. They know what has happened here. They know some of the rumors that have been going on, but they need to come home to know what has actually been going on and what they can see when they come home. I know they want to be here. So today, I'd just like to say, a few thanks to a few people. First of all, thank you to the many people who were here first, and that's the emergency responders and our firefighters who evacuated our residents safely. They did an awesome job, don't you agree? I thought they did awesome, thank you. When you consider that a massive evacuation was completed in this emergency situation with no lives lost, and no major injuries reported. Big thanks to our local fire department volunteers. You fought your hearts out, and especially at the onset of the disaster, and you are still on duty today and still involved. To the people of Slave Lake and the MD and the First Nation for evacuating in such an orderly fashion, I know how hard that was, but we thank you to the countless number of people who have opened their hearts over the past week, to all our constituents, to the volunteers at those centers, you made us so welcome. Donations, supplies, and support from volunteers continue to pour in from all across the province and the country. Through their generosity and compassion, Albertans and Canadians have once again shown their true colors. To the political leaders that are here today, the town, the MD, the First Nation, your strength, your perseverance, and your leadership has shone through these tough times. Thank you. This has and continues to be an extremely difficult time for all of us from Slave Lake, the Municipal District of Lesser Slave River, and the Saurage First Nation. So to all the people, the firefighters, to all the government representatives who are here to help us through this. Thank you for all the skills, the knowledge, and everything that you bring to make sure that we can move back to our communities. Although many houses and buildings have been damaged and destroyed, the heart and soul of our community, our people, has survived. Together, we will rebuild our homes, 
our businesses, and our community buildings, and make them even better for current and future generations. Hundreds of extremely dedicated men and women continue to work together around the clock. In fact, I understand uh, Tom, Chief Thompson here has stayed up till all hours of the morning this morning to make sure that this was done. To restore vital infrastructure and services so that we can all return home. I am so proud and so honored to represent the brave and resilient people of this region. Together, I know that we will emerge from disaster stronger and even more reunited than ever. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And thank you to those brave souls back here who were there for us. We will never forget. And now I'll ask Chief, Tom, Chief, Chief Sampson to please come forward to address the technical information. Chief. So folks, I won't take a lot of your time. Uh, if I can leave you with one overarching thought uh, and with three key points within that. The heart and soul of everything that has happened in this community has been it, the community itself and the way that they have responded. From the chief to the mayor to the reeve, the councillors and the residents, some of whom have lost their homes and have continued to work with us regardless of those circumstances. The heart and soul of this community is unbelievable and it is strong. The first responders, and I acknowledge that Chief Jamie Coots is here today, the fire chief. Uh, the first responders who have given their blood, sweat, and tears to make this community work. And those first responders include some of the community residents too, not just the, not just the fire department and the police service and EMS. People like Wanda, Lana, Keith, and Carl, they, they've lost homes. See a couple of, uh, of our fish and wildlife officers. 75% of them lost their homes in the fire that was related to this incident. So, and they're here and they're taking care of the community. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, I am impressed with the government of Alberta. I get to say this because I'm not tied to any one group, but they have had unwavering support in this, call, in this event. And I have loved the fact that as the EOC manager, when I call them, they get me what we need to do the job. And I'm terribly impressed with that. Something very special is happening here. A group of people from across the province, sometimes across the country, have gotten together. This community and this region will ultimately uh, emerge stronger than before. And I, I guess there's one thing to remember, that diamonds are made under pressure. I do thank you and will be available later for any technical questions you might have. Thank you.